Hello, we're doing a oil painting today in Malta. This painting is a after painting, it's a copy, and people have problems with this concept of after painting, as I've said in other videos. And moan like hell, dealers moan like hell. Yet you'll find that when it comes to a limited edition print, no one cares. No one cares. So I have decided as a, as a dealer and as a collector and a, and a admirer of antiques that I'm going to have after paintings and not get hung up on the fact it's not the, not the original. And I have limited editions too, and I, I consider them in a similar manner, in a similar light. So what, what we have here is an after painting, a copy. It's a copy of a Lely, Sir Peter Lely, L-E-L-Y. And Lely was mega prolific and he was very well known for portraits and people would ask him to ask him to paint to paint them and it was a semi-social thing it wasn't merely he is a good producer of paintings there was a social network and people didn't only want to have a nice painting of themselves or of people they knew or wanted to know they wanted to be able to say, oh, I, oh, I had Lily around to paint, to, to paint me. So, so there's, there are two sides to Lily. So what happened is Lily painted a lot of these, these portraits. And uh, I, I think personally, when you see Lily, you, you, you can tell usually. And when I saw these in Malta in a cell room, I knew they were Lily within 30 seconds. And um, there are, as I say, a huge amount of original Lelys, and there is an even more huge amount of after paintings. And there are so many after paintings that some of the after paintings are slightly different because the copiers were asked to and decided to, to, to change the actual pictures. So, for example, this one here, which is William III, you will find in England many of these after paintings. You won't find the original anymore, very rarely. The big sarums now have the after paintings and the sales. And you will find this one, for example, without the gold detail on the armour. And that means it's easy, easy to paint. You'll, you'll find it without the helmet. You'll find it with a black interior, which is easy to paint. You'll find it with less detail. So there are original, there is one original, and then there are these art paintings, which are, have various sizes, various qualities, various ages. I think this is 19th century, but they were painting very, very good pictures like this in the 20s and 30s in England. And part of me feels it's, it's later than the Victorian era. But I think given the fact that I bought two of them, and the, the other one is, is, is very obviously Victorian, I think it's likely that this is Victorian too. It's been realigned, it's been restored, and it's got the most fantastic shining in condition. And um, I think it probably is going to be 1880, 1890. Don't know who painted it. We know it was copied off the, the Sir Peter Lely. So the frame is a modern frame. It's, the frame is not 1880, 1890. The frame is maybe 1980. And I suspect that the canvas was restored when it was reframed. And the, the frame is an ordinary frame. It is a probably a probably a fake gold leaf. It could be a real gold leaf, but I don't think it is. I think it is a fake gold leaf. Uh, it's not yellow enough, it's not flat enough, it's not shiny enough, not bright enough. It has a sort of very slight texture to it. And the deterioration in it is blotchy. It's, it's not corrosion, but it looks like corrosion. You don't get corrosion deterioration in gold leaf, real gold leaf, you get sort of rubbing, rubbing deterioration. So it is, a, it is a fake gold leaf. There are lines, and you can see the panels of gold leaf, fake gold leaf, where they overlap. And uh, in this case, the panels of fake gold leaf are that big. So I think it's fake gold leaf on a pine frame, and it's a nice plain pine frame. There's no corner work, so it's a very simple frame cut down to fit. And I notice on this frame, very unusually, the filler, the internal insert, has a divide, a divide here and here. So they were being very economical with the lengths of trim, which is disappointing, but never mind, it doesn't matter. The, uh, you can't see it unless you really get up close. The mitre is very well done, and the condition of this painting and 
the condition of the frame is good. There was some gesso which has come off here which needs to be filled and painted. And given the fact it is fake gold leaf, it's very easy, easy to get a cut colour match. It is not as difficult as a, as a real water gilded gold leaf. So we, we come back to the picture. There is some cracking on the picture. But on, I, would, I would give it a 9 out of 10, 8 or 9 out of 10. It doesn't need to be restored any further. It doesn't need to go into a workshop. It doesn't look like it needs to go into a workshop. It doesn't look like it's just come out of a workshop. Some of the, the pictures that have come out of workshops have a, have a stickiness to them, which takes a few years to settle down. That can go straight into a house if you have the tiny bits of gold repair. It's a quite, quite a big one. A lot of the lilies are smaller, many of them, and many originals are smaller. Uh, the value in England, you will, pay, you will be paying three to five thousand pounds for a lily in a London salary. And there are a wide variety, always available. Uh, I, always, I, I can't help but think of horse paintings when I see these lilies because there's a way of painting a horse. Have you ever seen a podium on a horse? The horse's head is flat, the nose is down. And I can't, I always have to think of the same thing with these long nosed gentlemen. I always think of the way Napoleon's horse is painted. Um, and um, it's, a very distinctive, it's a very distinctive look, it's ever so hard to get across. Uh, the other one, the other lady, I'll do on, on a separate video, and that's a really interesting painting as well. So I've given you some, some comments, I hope you found it interesting. Thanks for looking.